Uh huh. F O R D D R O F. It's a draft. Yep, we're, we're working on the draft today. Anyway, to make a long story short, you guys have heard me talk about my brakes. Well, yeah, it's master cylinder time, even though the one that's on it ain't been on it, uh, I don't know, it ain't been on it two years. Thing is, around here, you can't find master cylinders for these old trucks that are new. They are hard to find. Well, anyway, I finally managed to get, yeah, it's Cardone. I ain't gonna say I like them, but it is new. Yeah, we got us a new one. It looks like it's trying to run away out the bottom of the box. So, well, we're gonna, for one-handed purposes, it's easier to jerk it out the bottom of the box than it is the top. We're gonna pull it out. Anyway, it's supposed to be brand spanking new. It's sealed in a bag, etc., etc. And you can tell by the castings, this thing is not a reman. This thing is a new master cylinder. The reason we're going to put a new master cylinder on this truck is because of the fact that these remands don't last. I'm sure that they've been rebuilt 500 times. They're pitted inside, etc., etc. They get them where they work. They put them out. You put them on. They don't last. I don't really suggest a, a remanufactured anything in the brake system. I, I really don't. That's like a remanufactured um, caliper. I suggest you take a little compressed air and push it apart and look at it. <laughs> make sure it's in good shape inside because sometimes they're not um, master cylinders you know if you want to use a reman take it apart and look at it if you know how i know how but it's more trouble than it's worth but you know you better off just buy a new one they're not that much more anyway we're going to need some of this brake fluid some of this professional strength my friends brake fluid is brake fluid i don't know what in the hell professional strength means Brake fluid is brake fluid, okay? It's dot three. The important crap on this label, they put it right down here. Dot three brake flood. That's all we need to know. We don't need to know that you're calling it professional strength and gold and all that bunch of crap. That's to make everybody think, oh, this is better. Let's buy it. It's better. Let's buy it. Well, anyway, here. Dot three brake fluid. I give you credit. At least you we're good, you know? Heavy duty high temp formula. All dot three has the same requirements. I don't know of any differences in it whatsoever. Yeah, selling gimmick. You know, selling gimmicks, selling gimmicks. But this one right here takes the cake. Professional strength, come on. It was the cheapest bottle of brake fluid they had, so I bought it. You know, I can tell you right now, if it wasn't the cheapest bottle of brake fluid they had, I wouldn't have bought it. I'd have bought the cheapest brake fluid they had, because brake fluid and antifreeze are two things that. I don't care what the brand name says on the darn jug, it's the same thing. And yes, you can use antifreeze for brake fluid. <laughs> Somebody on YouTube actually done that. Yep, he did. It's uh, BA, what is it? What is his darn username? BAH53, I think. I ain't 100% sure. If I happen to remember this by the time I edit the video, I'll give you a link to his channel. But he did it on an old Ford truck that he uses on his farm around. And uh, yeah. He put it in there because they actually share quite a few of the same ingredients. Da, 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 da. I don't know if it actually tells on these darn jugs. That's all in another language. Da, 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 da. Never wash parts. Yeah. Da, 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 da. I'll tell you another thing about, about this. Say you're going to put brake fluid in your vehicle. You know, granted on this truck it'd be impossible. Say, so oops! And you drop the whole blasted cork and it's dripping off your car. Well, everybody knows. Brake fluid leaks paint off, right? Everybody's like, oh crap, what do I do? What do I do? Get your water hose. Wash it off. Everybody tries to sell you, tries to tell you, not try to sell you, let me rephrase this, like on a brake system. Everybody has this misinterpretation about brake cleaner. Yes, I like brake cleaner. But the thing is with brake cleaner, is like say the inside bores of say a wheel cylinder, a master cylinder, things to that nature. You can use brake cleaner. You sure can, but that's not its intended purpose. You can actually take just some good sudsy water, soap and water, and wash those parts. It will dissolve the brake fluid and wash it away. If you spill it on the ground, you can wash it up with water, clean it up with water. I ain't saying wash it into the streams, wash it into the ground. I mean, you need to clean up what you can and dispose of it properly, but I mean, the residual residue 
you know, like on concrete, you get your water hose and a little soap, wash it right up. But water, but brake fluid will actually wash away with water hose. I mean, it will dissolve and go away. It's water soluble. That's why everybody says, if you're going to do something, use only brake fluid from a from a sealed container. If you leave, uh, say, the cap off of this, it will draw moisture. It will absorb moisture, and the more moisture that gets in this brake fluid, the more rust and corrosion you get on the inside of your brake system. And also, the quicker it hits a boiling point, and when your brakes get hot, the better chances they're going to fade and you're going to wreck the yourself. So, anyway, that's my little rant on, on a brake fluid. Brake parts cleaner is just that. It's for brake parts. It's to clean up the... It's, they use it to degrease linings, to, to degrease new rotors and things, to get oils and contaminations off the lining surfaces, and to clean up the goo and the gunk, as you will have seen by the time I upload this, that I, where I used it on the rear axle of this truck. That's what its design purpose is. But like say the inside of a master cylinder, if you're putting a rebuild kit in, which half you all watching this video go, oh, you mean you can rebuild those? Yeah, I actually checked on a kit with a brass sleeve, if any of you, some of you older people will know what I'm talking about. I checked on it, $45. New master cylinder, $25. Reman master cylinder, $14.99, I believe it was. What are you gonna do? Rebuild a master cylinder and put a, put a brass sleeve in it for almost double the money? Are you even gonna fool with taking it apart for $10? Mmm, probably not. Well, I mean, you get what I'm trying to say. Because the difference between that one was the time you put tax on it's thirty dollars, so you're looking at uh, you're looking at ten dollars more to put a kit in it. I mean, you gonna fool with it? No, you're not. You're not gonna fool with it. You're gonna buy the new one, which, like I said, it's a Cardone. I don't particularly like Cardone, but. New should have a little better tolerances than remanufactured, I'm hoping. But we'll find out. You know, this is a world of um, a world of throwaway crap anymore. Everything's throwaway. That's like an engine. You can buy a reman 350 small block cheaper than you can build a 350 small block if you've got it setting in your possession. By the time you pay for the machine work, etc. It's a throwaway world. That's all there is to it. We've got this thing out, and as you can see, the scratches on top of this, it's I've had her for a good while. I always clean it up perfectly and put it back in this box because there's all these little pieces and parts and crap that you'll lose. These lines, you know, you gotta flush them out and blow them out and clean them out. Like I said, especially when you're dealing with brake fluid, it is water soluble, so you can clean those lines with water after you blow them out. But we're gonna use this Mighty Vac to actually bench bleed and bleed the brake system on this truck because I don't have a helper today. You know, it's easier with the person pumping the pedal method, but anyway, that right there is actually more thorough, but I'll show y'all that. See y'all. Okay, everybody. What you're going to need to bench bleed a master cylinder. Granted, I could tote this down into the back 40 and actually put it in a vise and do all that bunch of good stuff, but we're not uh, you know most of you all out there don't have a vice you don't have a shop to work in etc etc let me adjust this camera some more it's kind of hard to video stuff sometimes for you all hard to keep it in the video but we're gonna I'm gonna get myself twisted around here I can sit down okay here's your uh Here's your master cylinder. They come with plugs. Put them in, tighten them up. Don't get crazy. You don't want to tighten them to the point of stripping them, okay? Because they are plastic. You can do, like I said, you can do this on the ground. And you need very, very few tools to do it. The first thing you want to do is take this lid off. And you want to put brake fluid in it. You don't want to fill it to the top. You want to fill it, I'm going to say a third to a half of the way full. About yay. And do not put the lid back on the master cylinder. It's to be off during this operation. Well, if you're gonna bleed the front cylinder or the back cylinder, there's actually 
two different operations that you do need to do. If you're going to say bleed the uh, back cylinder, which is usually what I do first, you actually want to incline it some. Not a lot. A pair of ice grips under it's plenty. Let's see if I can get it turned to where I can actually do this and you can see it. Use a screwdriver and you're going to push this can't do it sitting down that's for sure and you've got to hold this down and push it in and out there we go in and out short strokes about a half inch or so and I lied to you about what I was actually doing um, I think I said it backwards I think I said I was gonna work on this one first instead of this one I'm actually not I'm working on this one that's the reason you have it downhill <laughs> is um, you're wanting the air to come back into this one if there's any air trapped in the piston. And what you want to do is you want to keep stroking this and you're going to see air coming out and uh, you want to do it until you quit getting bubbles. That's the whole thing. Well anyway, I'm not going to go through the whole, I'm not going to record the whole thing, but you keep doing this until you quit seeing bubbles. And then after you do it that way for a while, tilt it back like I said, just tilt it just a bit. And after you've done that, you think you've got all the air out of it, hold it up and peck the body of it. Peck it around like that. And you're probably going to see air bubbles start like they want to come out. And it just releases the air from the inside if there's any stuck in there. And you do it some more. And the longer you spend bench bleeding this master cylinder, the better chances your brakes bleeding out and bend right the first time. So anyway, that's how you do it. Now I'm going to actually do it, which will take me six or eight minutes. Okay. Well, when you think you've got this bled, you're not seeing any air. I can't see the camera, so I hope you can see me. What you're going to want to do is pick it up, and bang it on your bench, ground, whatever, like that, and then bang it like that. Do it backwards and forwards, and then give it a few more strokes. You most likely, when you bang it on the ground, you will see air come up out of one or the other, depending on which way you got it tilted. Uh, that's a tidbit. You can't get all the air out of it by pushing the piston backwards and forwards. You will never get all the air out of it. You bang it on the ground like that, and you're actually causing the air and the fluid to change places, basically. You're just forcing it out. Well, I've got this and bled good, so we're going to work on putting it on. So, Anyway, more to come. Quick disclaimer, everybody, and um, I'm just going to tell you what, I, what I'm going to do and why I'm going to do it and what I did, what I have actually done prior to doing this and why I did that. Anyway, when it comes to this master cylinder, as you can see, there is a brake block on the front right there. That is for a trailer brake, for a hydraulic trailer, bla trailer brake. It is in the truck. Those lines going into that block are frozen solid into the brace. I'm not going to risk breaking a line. The lines are in good shape. It's actually the um, the brake block. They're just you know, basically metals are incap and incompatible. You know, steel and brass they don't get along necessarily well. They get along pretty decent. They get along better steel on steel. Um, you know, you've got like aluminum and steel do not get along whatsoever. You know, and they cause oxides and things of this nature. Anyway, they're they're froze up. I've tried this in the past. There's an easier way of doing this. I'm going to unhook the back line, get it out of the way, unbolt, unbolt the master cylinder, flex it forward. And after I flex it forward, I'm going to actually just spin it over and over and over and unscrew that brake block. And I'm going to put it back together the exact same way. I will use a wrench on the brake block to start it releasing from the master cylinder just to keep them twisting a the line. But, you know, is it right? Is it wrong? That's probably wrong, but we're going to do it anyway. It'll work. It'll function. I also filled that master cylinder completely brimming to the top with brake fluid. There is no air in it. I actually squirted fluid out when I put the cap on it. Did that on purpose. Um, I'm actually going to, that way when I flip it over and over, I won't be introducing air back into the bore of the master cylinder. But anyway, just a tidbit. Let's get the wrenches I need and get this off air. Okay. I just got some wrenches um, stuck here just for basically for good humor. Um, what I have actually done, let me tighten this camera down and spread the legs out and all that good stuff. Uh, 
I don't want the wind blowing it over. The wind is blowing today, so I need to tighten everything down because uh, if this moves while I'm actually doing this, I'm not going to know it. And I'd be darned if I'm going to take it off and put it back on just to, just to show you. When you're taking lines loose, it's always a good idea to use a line wrench. Um, and where I'm actually going to start is with the back line. That's where I'm going to start. On a Ford, it's a pain in the end because you can't see the darn thing. Just remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. You know, it's going to go toward the back to loosen. So, I need to find my step stool here. If I can figure out where it went. Wow. Wind may blew her away, boys. Take again. Nope, it's on the other side of the truck. Don't you love it? Tow wrecker is not prepared to make a video and he turns the camera on. Wow. Actually, my step stool's five gallon bucket. I usually sit on it, but we're gonna stand on it today. Just because um, I'm trying to show you something. Whoa, there's some instructions for that brake. Master cylinder, we don't want that, uh, we don't want that down in the motor. Anyway, this back line, loose would be toward the back. As you can see, the line is wanting to turn. See the line flexing? That's a no-no, don't want that to happen. So we're gonna climb up in here a little bit. And what we're gonna do is get hold of this line and push back on it and twist this at the same time. And we need to work it. This is tight, it's rusted against the flare. So here's what you need to do. You need to go to your cabinet of goodies get a can of some of this good stuff, which I've about used all of. Get a can of this stuff. Yeah, CRC freeze off. Works good, especially for stuff like this. And you want to spray right around it in a couple blasts like that. Yeah, it looks wasteful, but it's really not. It serves a purpose to do that. It washes away some of the contamination, gives it a little lube. You want to push back on that line. Look at there. You see what just happened? It just went tink and come apart. Hope you can see that. Loose as a goose. Look there. Pretty as you please. Well, I'm not ready to disassemble that. I don't want to mess, so I'm going to snug it back up. Okay? And for good humor, I'm going to give this a little squirt on this brake block. I'm pretty sure it's going to move, but, you know, I don't want to take those lines out. One of those has been butchered up with a vice grip. I got it out one time. I'm not going to do it again. We're going to make sure it'll turn. Yep, she's going to turn. See? Pretty as you please. It's backwards and forwards. Granted, it's the lines. I'm not trying to turn it far. So we're that far. Okay. Need to make sure what you can see before I go any further. Okay. You can see one side of what I'm doing. The bolts that go to the, um, the booster right here once again you cannot see the blasted things okay unless you're climbed up in the engine compartment which I'm not going to be take some more of this freeze off and I'm going to spray them give it just a second and give it another good dousing it actually that you're basically rinsing away some of the contamination to try to, to ease up your pain um, and we're going to attempt to break them loose you know that there we go pretty as you please loosened right up well we're gonna do the other side go ahead and break it free all righty and always remember which way you're moving your wrench I'm gonna get this up here and use the palm of my hand aha just pretty as you please, smooth as new, smooth as silk. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and take this one off. You can use a ratchet for this. You can. You can use air tools. You can use all sorts of things. I myself am more of a wrench type of guy. I've got air tools. I generally, as a rule, do not use them. Just, I don't. I just like to do it by hand. It's just always how I've been. Nut come right off. I actually screwed it most of the way off by hand. I'm telling you right now, yeah, I remember I'm working blind here. If I had not um, sprayed those and sprayed them with a, a quality product like what I did, that for sure would not have happened. This one's going to be a little tighter, but this one was also 
a whole lot more rusted, okay? That it's coming. It'll come by hand now. Wait the master cylinders again. It may turn into, I can't really get a grip on it. We're going to be forced to use uh, the wrench. And as you can see, my wrench is plumb nasty now. See all that nasty red? That freeze off actually eats the rust. It really does. It eats it right up. It does, it does a good, very, very good job. Well, I've about got it off. You want to actually take it to where it's got a couple threads, leave one of them still on there. Leave it on, don't take it off. And the reason being is because you haven't uh, you haven't removed any lines at this point. You don't want that coming and flopping around too much. You just want it kind of positioned. <coughs> See, line wrench. I'm gonna remove this line. I'm going to bleed this whole brake system. Um, if you wasn't going to bleed their whole brake system, you actually don't. And you just replace the master cylinder if you bench bleed it correctly. Um, you can actually just pump the brakes of liquor and bleed it right here. You can get the air out. But you don't want to jar these lines when you take them off. Nor do you want to get any of this nasty rust in that brake line. You don't want to sit here and flop this line around. Um, these have, on the forwards, they have big coals right here. Down here, which you really can't see. But you can take that line... Put your hand in the coal and just roll it just a bit and push that line clear out of your way without damaging the line because it's got like uh, three coals. It's so it can move up and down and have flex without hurting anything. This master cylinder is just sitting here and pouring. It should not be doing that. It should not just be sitting there just pouring like that. Yeah, you can gravity bleed things, but that's a bit excessive for what just a second you take it loose. It's most likely destroyed inside. Well, it's not working correctly, so we know it is. We are going to take this last nut off. We're going to find my 9 16 wrench. And like I said, this is not by any means the correct way, okay, my friends? This master cylinder is actually going to have to, the back of it is going to have to turn up toward me. And like I said, this is a, the wrong way of doing this, but it's just the way that this situation is and the way this is going for me this is my most logical option and I have bent this line since I did this that's the line going to my brakes all off here I'm really bending them lines around well I'm going to cut the video off it will go around. I'm going to get it off, but I'm not going to try to do it in quick time so this video is not three hours long. I'm going to get it off, and uh, I'll show you when I go to put it back on.